hold a building up. Traditionally, if you build with bricks of straw, as we do, but traditionally, you have to allow for the building to be four inches shorter one year after you built it. So you have to allow for movement. We get rid of all of that problem because office buildings don't want to be four inches shorter. It causes problems with lifts and stairs and things like that. So we take all of that out. The other question we get is fire. Okay, that's all very well, but what about fire? Straw is going to go up uh, like nobody's business. We've just done our European fire testing. Uh, this is one and a half hours into the fire test and the render has failed and then we ran the test for another hour with just straw. So we have uh, a European certificate for two and a half hours. We only needed to do an hour and eventually we stopped the test because we thought, okay, well, let's just see how far it's burnt through. So cellulose performs extremely well in fire. Everybody knows wood burns but if any of you have had a misspent youth and tried to set a bale on fire, it's quite difficult. The other thing about cellulose is its fabulous insulation quality. Here it says 2 hours 12 minutes into the test. It is 1100 degrees C inside the chamber and it is 42 degrees outside. So that's a cup of tea 15 minutes after you boil the kettle. It has huge buffering capacity and that also brings us into the way in which the building performs. So that's the fire test, we, we open it up and finish it. The other thing we're doing is uh, we don't want to manufacture this stuff centrally. We don't want a big factory in Birmingham and ship straw around the country. We do something called a flying factory. So here are the IKEA panels. There's a big Allen key that we use to put all of that together. And then uh, we then identify a farmer's barn, and I'll come and talk to you, Nick, about that. Uh, farmer's barn have a 40% occupancy through the year, 60% unoccupied or unproductive. So we then diversify local farming business by offering uh, the rental. We then also say, can we use your skill and labor? And do you st grow straw? And often we are building this system about three to five miles away from the construction site. It's more difficult in London, but with 10 miles is what we did in London. And then uh, we use local skills and labor. And there they are, the raw ingredients, straw. That's, that's the barn, that's the flying factory. Uh, we do something called bale shaving. Bales come out of balers, roughly this by that by this, uh, but buildings need to be a bit more accurate, so we shave them, and uh, we then get them to exactly the size we want. The panels are then laid on their back, and then uh, lifted up, bales go in, and you get this. People love building these things. We have also done it at the Northwest Media Center, where the project manager said, could we get local businesses to sponsor a panel and maybe come along and get involved in the building? We said, yes, we can, we can do that. They eventually got 24 local businesses in the Southwest to sponsor the panel at £3,000 each. 12 of those businesses came along to away days. They didn't have to build a raft, they had to build a panel, including Avon Fire Brigade that built two of these things. Uh, they got their cladding for free. We don't offer that as a, uh, an opportunity on every building we build, but in the short term, it's one of the means by which we can work with uh, community projects and keep the costs low. Hencrete. Hencrete is organic concrete. So concrete is cement, sand, and aggregate. Hemp is lime, sand, and hemp. The woody core from the hemp stalk, four meter tall grass, when they take all the fibers off and take the oil out, what you get is this kind of chip stuff. And it ends up looking like a giant wheat bix, which we then cast in the panel. And then we can do uh, all sorts of different uh, window openings. We then lime render. Lime render is a breathable material, which makes the building very comfortable to occupy. We don't always deliver to site with uh, tractors. That's for the publicity shot. But because the guy on site gets a closed cladding panel. This is the way we build them, you don't really need to see that, but we work with solid timber engineering. So I went to school uh, 28 years ago, uh, a school of architecture to learn how to build buildings. It is now uh, so fantastically simple that you, you build a wall, put a floor in it and put another wall on top of it. Uh, I spent 28 years learning that, it's not that simple, but it's now actually gone back to being that simple. First project we did was the University West of England. The second one was a tall pine eco building. That's also a prefabricated straw roof, the first in the world. Um, a deck, a display energy certificate, A rated. There aren't too many of those in the country. 
We then worked with York City Council and did the York Eco Detail, so that's all straw. So between inside and outside, you have lime render, a straw bell, and lime render. Apart from cob, we can't think of a simpler way of building buildings. This is the Old West Media Centre. Those are all sponsored by uh, various businesses. Uh, another nice picture. Then uh, we're doing phase two of the University of West of England. Then how do we build these things? Prefab, modern methods of construction, extremely fast. So Grand Designs asked us to build a house live on television in a week with Kevin MacLeod. Sunday, 6 p.m., we put down a sole plate. We drop the panels in, 10 minutes per panel to drop in. They just all go together. Uh, corner post, post, done the same way. Five days later, we've done that. Two days to de demand, and half of that building is now being reused at the University of Bath, building uh, uh, another, what we call a bale house, which is a pun on bow house. spotted that one. It's an upside down house. That opens, uh, so they are all cellulose, 90% by weight, this building grew. It's a plant-based material. The performance of the building, we are three times higher than the building regulations demand your thermal performance to be. We, oh, there's a little list here. There's a picture, that's the house on site. So here's the list. It's made from renewable and recyclable materials. It has a U value of 0.13 to 0.18. That's, that's, for those who are not in construction, that is the means by which you measure, measure the thermal performance. The building regulations are, th are three times higher than that currently. Airtight construction. Uh, in, in your house, you'll have a hole in your, a holes in your building that you don't know about, which are about the size of half of that door opening there of which 30% of your heating bill goes uh, and leaks out of. So we have an air tightness which is 10 times higher than the new building regulation would demand. The captured carbon, we have 1,400 kilograms of CO2 sequestered <coughs> into each uh, panel, so we are carbon negative. We've just done the uh, life cycle assessment, full life cycle assessment of a bale house. Uh, 34 tons of CO2 locked up in a bale house. We minimize uh, CO2 uh, through transportation by using plant factories. And there's something called the global warming potential. That's life cycle analysis jargon for saying how bad is your building in global warming potential. And we are half of uh, a conventional building. And that includes all of the site excavation work, all of the scaffolding, all of the transport of people to and from the site, etc., etc. So we meet something called passive house specification. We are able to demount and reuse and redeploy. All the materials are recoverable and recyclable. And at the very end of its life, the building becomes biomass. So the specification would also mean that your heating bill is technically what they call zero heat. We are 85% less than the building regulations require in heating terms, which means the only heating requirement you have is for your hot water, for showering and bathing, because we heat the building off body heat, PCs, boiling kettles, and you having a shower. That's how high performance it is. So over the life of the building, we are uh, fantastically efficient, which then allows the technologies that you use to reduce carbon further to you spend less on them. So this is what a bell house big style would look like. That's it all in its bits. The townhouse, we're trying to make these buildings look like uh, beautiful buildings. Uh, sustainability is not meant to be ugly. It's meant to be beautiful, and that's what we hope we're doing. And that's where I'm going to talk, talk in 22 minutes.